Today's episode will be about the homosexual man, also known as the gay or same-sex attracted man, and their struggle with the boxer ceiling. Now, I am not a man, and I'm definitely not a gay man, uh, but I am hoping that today's episode would correctly demonstrate uh, the gay man's struggle with the boxer ceiling. As a lesbian, I can totally empathize since we've got our very own cotton ceiling, which I have discussed in this video right up here, if you wanna check that out. If you knock in to check it out, uh, let me explain to you exactly what the cotton ceiling and and the boxer ceiling is. The cotton or boxer ceiling are just the objections a lesbian or a gay man would have for not dating a trans person, i.e. the opposite sex. Look, if you are a gay man, I am sure you must be sick of my people, the female people, uh, speaking about you, sliding in your DMs and asking you to give you good chiding about not wanting to eat pussy. And rest assured that I am not here to ask you to eat me out. But I hope you would trust me for however many minutes uh, to bring to help bring this issue to light. I hope you do. So let's go. going to lie it has been a challenge for me to plot this episode uh, simply because it just felt sometimes wrong for me to discuss worlds that I'm barely exposed to one being the world of men and the other being the world of gay men I do not leave the house and I don't particularly want to either so the only man in my life right now is my postman and I love watching him walk away from my house my exposure to men hasn't always been positive and we'll leave it at that. When it comes to gay men, well, I've always gone with most of them like a house on fire. I enjoy the dynamics of being caring and thoughtful towards them without it being misconstrued for anything else. Something that I'm always more careful in my relationships with women and straight men. But don't get me wrong, some of you can be absolute cunts and I'm sure you'd agree. Like, men and women are completely different. I know many right now are trying to blur these lines and make it look like we're one and the same. But we are so different, and that difference is so much more pronounced in a world where men are sexually attracted to other men, and women are sexually attracted to other women. I have been to gay bars, and although every man there was super welcoming and polite, I knew that I walked in a space that wasn't for me. Listen, the people who say that males can be females and vice versa are people who are not only lying to you, but they're lying to themselves. We will soon explore why female says that she's male and therefore belongs in gay men spaces and their dating pool. But first, let's check out a few definitions from JK Rowling's twin brother, Jake Rowling. So this is the definition of the word sex. Either of the two main categories, male and female, into which most humans and other living things are divided based on their reproductive systems. Let's have a look again at the definition of the word sexual orientation. So as per the Equality Act, 10 S 12. Sexual orientation means a person's sexual orientation towards one person of the same sex, two person of the opposite sex, three person of either sex. The definition of the word male of or denoting of the sex that produces gametes, especially spermatozoa, with which a female 
may be fertilized or inseminated to produce offspring. The definition now of the word man. An adult male human being. Definition now of the word homosexuality. The quality or characteristics of being sexually attracted solely to people of one's own sex. Now let's have a look at the word gay man. Of a person, homosexual, used especially of a man. I know some women prefer to describe themselves as gay, which is totally fine, but here I'm just going to refer to gay, it's going to be a man, and for a woman I will say the dirty word lesbian. Now last time we were here, we ended with a very short clip, which I'm going to show again in case you haven't seen the cotton ceiling. Trans pride is different because it's talking about gender rather than sexuality. It's quite challenging to LGB people because if gender is on a spectrum, uh, then homosexuality doesn't really exist because it can only exist in a binary. So when it comes down to it, it's just two people or maybe three or whatever loving each other, you know, it's nothing, nothing to do with sexuality and sexuality is redundant. Now let me know what you guys think this is, because to me it sounded like... That's right! It's just a politically correct way to be homophobic in 2021. Tell a gay man to fuck a woman because she's got a beard, and if he says no, call him a f it. And don't forget to identify as queer and fly the rainbow flag to avoid being held accountable. I have never seen the word f fag being used as much as it is used today. It was a word, if uttered, would get you in serious trouble for being homophobic. Unless you're Matt Damon or part of the LGBTQIS2 plus community. Now do gay men really deserve to be called faggots for simply having sexual boundaries? No. Are gay men attracted to anyone with a vagina? No. Are gay men transphobic for rejecting a trans man? No. Do you see where I'm going with this? Oh, thanks guys. No, honestly, there isn't a world where rejecting somebody based on their sexuality is any kind of phobia. Rejecting anyone as a potential sexual partner is not a crime. It never will be, period, and we've been over that already. Now, I do not have any words of wisdom of how it feels like to be a gay man. It's a world that I just don't understand and I don't think any woman will be able to ever understand it. It's a world where we are simply guests. The only certainty that I have is that this love should be free of sick intrusions such as these.
Most of these tweets are from females, biological women who have gone through a hormonal transition, uh, which changed the features slightly, uh, such as a deeper voice, bigger muscle mass, more body hair and facial hair. Most of them have gone through double mastectomy as well. And just like trans women retain their core male features, trans men retain their core female features. And it honestly isn't that hard for a gay men not to find them attractive. The thing about sex being a binary is that unless you're totally brainwashed, you will be able to tell with a 98% accuracy who produces ova and who produces spermatozoa. Can you imagine if you could predict the lottery numbers with that much accuracy? Would you say, oh, there's a 2% chance I might lose, therefore I will not play those numbers at all. No, you will play those numbers and yes, there is 2% chance you might be wrong. A woman produces ova. Our bodies have been perfectly engineered to carry and birth new life. With that engineering comes very noticeable traits from our sex to our body shapes, which will have variables. For men, as spermatozoa producers, their hormones will change their bodies. They will be normally much larger than females, as well as have a deeper voice, more body hair, facial hair, larger muscle mass, simply because of the hormones coursing through their veins. Not to mention they will have very different reproductive systems than women. We will look at someone and see a large frame, broad shoulders, large hairy hands, straight hips, flat chest, big feet. And within many seconds, our wonderful brains will deduce that this person we're looking at is a man and therefore has a penis. Because only having a penis and testes will shape a body like the one that I've described, without intervention, of course. Our brain will make this calculation. Secondary sex characteristics equals primary sex characteristics. And we will do this and it will be bright 98% of the time. And yes, there is a 2% chance that we may be incorrect. We depend on this calculation to procreate as species. So any argument that goes, think of the 2% of the time you might be wrong, so don't even bother making that calculation, is just plain dumb and regressive. Heterosexuals have depended on that calculation to find opposite sex partners with a 98% success rate. Bisexuals have depended on that calculation to find opposite sex and same sex partners with a 98% success rate. Homosexual women have depended on that same calculation to find same sex partners with a 98% success rate. Homosexual men have depended on that very same calculation to find same sex partners with again a 98% success rate. Now with women taking male hormones, the calculation changes too. Secondary sex characteristics does not equal primary sex characteristics. Now two things happen. First, the rate of failure increases. Second, on the rare occasion we do get it wrong, we normally would have laughed it off, apologized and moved on and acquired a new story to tell our friends. With the rise of straight women taking male hormones, this is the price gay men pay for getting it wrong and rejecting partners solely based on their primary sex characteristics. They get to be educated and hate crimed based on their sexuality.
I mean, sexuality is based on sex after all. It never had anything to do with the type of clothes that you wear or your haircut or lack of. Before the trans right movement, it was almost okay for a straight man to be dating a gender non-conforming woman. Now in their eyes, as a straight man, you might be a closeted gay man or a closeted bisexual. Just because you like masculinity on a woman, or even worse, because she likes it on herself. You are no longer a straight man. Until the trans right movement, it was almost okay for a straight woman to be dating a gender non-conforming man. Now that straight woman might be labeled as bisexual or a lesbian. Now gender stereotypes has replaced sexuality within the trans right movement. It is no longer okay to be attracted to a sex. You must now only like the gender stereotype presented to you regardless of that person's sex. And the proof is in the language they use. A trans lesbian is really a straight man and a gay trans man is really a straight woman. As you've seen, if a woman has got a beard, a double mastectomy, is wearing a cap or a t-shirt, a gay man mustn't reject her. She is a man, a real man. Therefore, her vulva is part of male anatomy. This is the world we live in now. I am not misgendering here. People have been seduced by the chance trans women are women, trans men are men, in the name of inclusion and kindness. But trans men are women and trans women are men. And I'm not saying that to be mean. I'm just saying that because it's the truth. And at the end of the day, it's a very important truth for homosexuality, which is immutable. And the same goes for sex. So let's stop telling lies now. Now, who do you think this hurts the most? The people whose sexuality is immutable and isn't some kind of fluid rainbow riding unicorn. Right now, it's lesbians and gays but I don't think the trans right movements will stop there. If you're straight and watching this, get ready for your sexuality to be vilified and questioned because you're not being inclusive enough. Now I was born in the mid eighties and whilst growing up, I was exposed to the vitriol gay men used to suffer. With gay men, it was always slurs and violence. I grew up in France until 98 and the French slur for faggot was always used when a man, regardless of his sexuality, was beaten. When I moved to England, it was slurs such as queer, fruitcake, faggot that were used as well as violence. For the longest time, gender non-conformity was associated with homosexuality. So people got beaten and slurred for that. As I grew up, I noticed a shift and the acceptance of homosexuality in the West. By the time I escaped the cult of Scientology and came out as a lesbian, it was really safe to be a homosexual. Thanks to the blood and tears shed by lesbian and gay generations before me. Fast forward to 2021 and I'm witnessing worse homophobia than I did when I was a kid. Before I was shaming lesbians and gays for being same sex attracted. Now it's because we aren't inclusive enough in our sexuality. After all, trans women are women with dicks and trans men are men with boulders. And trans women and trans men are 
the most marginalized people on earth, right? Well, no. Let's have a look at the biased hate crime from the FBI in 2019. As you can see, for the sexual orientation based crimes, gay men have been victims of more violence and hate crimes than everybody else combined. I know that the trans right activists like to chant that trans people are the most marginalized people everywhere. When this claim is made, I always make a point of asking for proof or statistics to support these claims, only to be met with digital tumbleweeds. I'll link the link in the description below for the FBI crimes and victim statistics, but have a look at this one. Victims who are trans are lumped into a category which includes lesbian, gay and bisexual, a mixed group. They do not have their own categories. This does not properly reflect the actual numbers for the trans community. And if it's to denote trans people who identify as LGB, I am sorry to tell you that the FBI is a turf. I am aware that crimes for lesbians and gays are also being misreported. Lesbians who have been murdered this year have barely seen any headlines and those crimes have not been recorded as hate crimes. They've been recorded as lives lost as opposed to lives taken due to rampant homophobia. Like lesbians, gay men are under tremendous pressure by the inclusive Be Kind Be movement kind. to Be accept inclusive. the opposite sex as Bobby. viable sexual partners. Like us, they have said no over and over again, politely finding refuge in terms such as homosexuality and same-sex attraction just to say no. They are same-sex attracted and are accepting of their sexual partners to explore any genders they wish, as long as they are male. I want you to really pause and have a look at the ugliness behind the inclusive, be, be kind, kind trans right movement. Fuck look me. how far they're willing to take things to violate gay men's sexual boundaries. This is done with a lot of emotional blackmail. You know the, if you don't validate my identity, I will take the suicidal box in the next Stonewall survey. Yeah, I went there. And if that doesn't work, you can always rape a gay man in a sauna. In the world where we calculate secondary sex characteristics equals primary, sex characteristics, going stealth and not showing what's under the towel is deliberately tricking people. Gay men consent on the above calculation. If you turn out to be a woman, they haven't consented to that. Lesbians and gays have never wanted to harm trans people and we still don't. But the harm that is said that we're doing to them is simply rejecting them based on our sexuality 
that and saying that they are biological males and females. We've said no too many times to count. We've even tried to create our own communities and charities dedicated to LGB people, but we denied that at every turn because it is exclusionary to trans people. Currently, there is just one charity dedicated to LGB people, just the one, there are no other. And this charity is the LGB Alliance, which is constantly being attacked as a hate group, even though it is inclusive of same-sex attracted trans people. Trans rights activists are terrified of homosexuality, as you've noticed. It is something that they're trying to completely eradicate simply because it denies straight men and straight women their fetish kicks. Let me close off with this. In 2015 and 2016, Magdalene Burns started making videos on YouTube about the phenomenon that was a lesbian with a penis. This was before I even knew what was going on. And by 2017, I caught up and I was totally outraged. There were many attempts to warn the game community, but because it wasn't affecting them back then, nobody really paid attention. I then went to bury my head in the sand for a couple of years and by the time I came back there must have been a tsunami of straight women flooding the gay community because I saw that gay men were now fighting this fight with the lesbians. So here's my message to you if you're heterosexual. Please pay close attention. Your heterosexuality has already been described as a breeding king by the all-inclusive, be, be kind crowd be should you reject they? trans people from your dating pool. If you're not sure who the inclusive, be, be kind, kind crowd is, oh my god that's annoying. They are also the people who are pushing for your mother, your grandmother, your aunts, your sisters, your girlfriends, your wives your daughters to be referred to as people with vaginas, menstruators, cervix havers, reducing girls and women to body parts and in the same breath accuse you of reducing them to body parts should you reject their sexual advances. All in the name of inclusivity and kindness. My only question to you is, will you be assimilated or will you set your boundaries? I know what I will do, tell me what will you do?